Today, I'm going to do a piece on a guy named George Matarano that I met in Polak. This guy uh, actually almost saved my life. I, I met Georgie with a guy named Tommy. We call him Black Tommy because we have a lot of Tommies in LA and this guy, we always called him Black Tommy because he always, he came from Louisiana and he was uh, a book writer. So when I got to uh, Pollock, uh, Tommy was already there and he introduced me to this guy named George. I, uh, I took a liking to George immediately because George has got that Philly accent and George is always talking about his dad and he was always talking about John Gotti and Gene Gotti. But to one day, uh, I got to know George. He was in my unit, and a guy named Twin introduced me to him, JC, out of L.A. And um, George was a kind of guy. He kept his shirts starched, real, real nice shirts. He kept his shirts, new shirts, and he always had people wash his shirts, and he had a nice shell and everything. We had a, a nice unit. And um, one day... Uh, when Tommy and um, George was always hanging together, they was always talking business. And uh, I used to follow them around, uh, going to the store, going to the library, because George always would talk about his case, how his case need to get overturned, how he caught his case in Texas, and how he pled guilty to uh, whatever it was. And uh, he had got a life sentence, but I think he was had airplanes full of stuff. And George had some of the most amazing stories and I always listen to George's stories. One day I'll be able to tell you some of the stories he told me about when he was in um, in uh, New York. He was uh, doing a story. He had uh, talked about the uh, the music festival was up there. I forgot the name of it, but George tell these 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 cold stories. And uh, one day I hope I'll be able to. But to talk about this guy George, one day uh, I was in the unit. I didn't have no celly, and I was asleep. And I was laying down. So this dude uh, came to my door and he said, hey, man, uh, they told me to to uh, move into this cell. And uh, and um, I say, man, uh, I got a celly coming today. Uh, uh, I don't think you want to uh, move in here right now. I got a celly. So, uh, you know, a few hours later, they put this guy in the cell with Twin. I think Twin knew the guy from a previous penitentiary. So uh, George came in like after count, and uh, they told George that, uh, hey man, I think Fish and the guy got into it about the cell, and you need to go down there and talk to Fish. So when George came to me, he said, hey, uh, Fish, uh, did you uh, get into it with that guy right there that's from Louisiana? He just came out of ADX. And he did uh, 10 years, five or 10 years in ADX. And uh, did you get in tour with him? I said, no, 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 George. I, uh, I just told him that uh, I had a celly coming today and I wouldn't be able to, uh, and he wouldn't be able to move in the cell with, uh, with me. And, and George said, okay, Fish, I'm glad you didn't say nothing to this guy because this guy is actually a, 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 a serial killer. He was in another joint with, with, uh, with uh, George. And um, George seen him kill a guy. And he said that he's, he's glad that I didn't say nothing too serious to, about, to this guy because this guy is a real killer. But I, I, you have to ask George to tell you the rest of the story because some have, some, somebody got capitated, uh, castrated. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but George told me that somebody got castrated and he glad that I didn't um, say anything to the guy, but uh, uh, after that the guy got his own cell. He moved downstairs to the uh, to the to the to the other unit, and uh, George was like, was you know he was always laughing at me and stuff. Said Fish, I'm glad you didn't say nothing to that guy. That guy is a real killer and everything. So I said, okay, George, you know man, uh, I'm always being respectful and everything. George used to always have a smile on his face. So we always would uh, go to the law library. And we always, I liked it to be around George because George has some of the amazing stories. And I remember one day that uh, George was real happy and um, George's father had got out of jail. I think they called him uh, Slim, something like that. And he was real uh, uh, 
happy that his dad got out. And uh, he was like, kind of like celebrating and everything. And then um, a few days later or a month later, uh, we see George and um, George wasn't, um, he wasn't that happy. I think uh, George's father had got killed or something like that. But, uh, you know, we, we, we mourned with George. We hung around George and everything. And we always, you know, talked about books. I think him and Tommy wrote a book called Prisons for Dumb. But, but George had these stories and he had these books already written. And I always watched George, and George always watched me. He always asked me, man, do you ever play the piano before? And I said, why, why, why you say that, George? He said, you got some of the most longest fingers that I ever seen. <laughs> and George would always <coughs> mess with me about that. But uh, after George's father got killed, uh, George was kind of like down for a little while because, you know, he really loved his dad because he's always talking about his dad. Slam was going to get out, and his dad is, is into the mafia and different things like that. But. I know uh, one day, uh, John, uh, one day uh, uh, George had got some news that uh, uh, John Gotti had died, and you know I think John Gotti was his stepdad, or he some way he was tied into John Gotti and Gene Gotti, and George had been around the prison system for a while. He had like I think he had a life sentence, and he had been in a few penitentiaries, and he knew a lot of people. And um, one day George told us, he said, hey, "Man." Um, you know, just my friends, you know, a lot of my friends, man, um, I'm going to do a eulogy. I'm going to do a service of uh, John Gotti's death. And, uh, man, could you, me, Tommy, a few other guys that actually that was uh, around George, uh, that always was with George, to come into the service. And um, George actually, uh, he, he, he had us come to the service, and George was talking about... Uh, how uh, him and um, John Gotti, him and John Gotti, uh, was his father, was like a uh, some kind of relationship or some kind of thing with his father and stuff like that. And George did a spectacular service uh, on, on to the ministry, and the chaplain let him do it because I think George was a Catholic. George always went to church. That's one thing about I noticed about a lot of those uh, those mafia guys. I know another guy is is mafia guy. I was in. Terry Hutt and Leavenworth, Lampard, Polar, and that with a lot of mafia guys. And I'm gonna bring out a I'm gonna bring out a series called Mafia Men. But to, to make a long story short, George did a beautiful service on John Gotti, and he you know he passed out some pamphlets. He did a real nice service, and you know we was, we was in the church with him, and uh, he did a real nice service. Chaplain let him do it, and he had to you know everybody was like you know really. Really, uh, he did a real good job for a guy that he kind of like uh, uh, idolized. And uh, one day, uh, George used to always ask me, man. He said, "Man, you do you ever you ever did any acting? Or I'm gonna do an acting class." But I thought, you know, I thought George was just like you know, bull driving around. So actually, I did uh, Toastmasters in um, Atlanta back in the days, but I never finished because I got transferred. But George did an acting class. And we had to uh, come up with some skits to perform in front of George, and he graded us, and we got grades on the uh, acting and the, and, and, and the thing into uh, acting class. And George, uh, we all did our skits, and we all did our plays, and we all did things. And one day, and then George told me, he said, hey, hey Ron, man, uh, hey, Fish, man, um, you, you, uh, you really did a good job. And he was telling the guys, yeah, this guy Fish had a life sentence. And Fish uh, been in jail for a while, and he's been in several penitentiaries. And uh, Fish is, is a real, real good friend of mine. And I was I was honored to even be around uh, George. You know, uh, sometimes, man, you take a liking to these mafia guys because you really get to get to see the the real Italian culture. And George always asked me, man, uh, uh, Ron Fish, do you need anything or? Is anything you know? He was a real nice guy, and this is the kind of guy that I, you know, I would, I would uh, give my shirt to, my last shirt, my last uh, pair of shoes, whatever I, I had that I, I, I would, uh, that that I, I, George needed, I would give to him. I used to do, you know, do little errands for him, go to the library and uh, you know, copy papers for him and everything. But George was always working on his case. And recently, I seen George get out of jail, and I really want to send out my condolences to George 
and uh, George Monteranto out of Philly, and I would I love George, and I would just like to let everybody know this is a real guy. He's a real stand-up guy, and he's everybody needs to know who this guy is. George Monteranto, Monterano.